Welcome to module two. This is where the fun is going to start. We're going to start building this personal budget. Let's go ahead and just get started right away. As I showed you before, do you remember how do we delete a row? Just right click it up here, select delete row, get rid of my name. We don't need that. Now we got two sheets we're going to work with. Let's delete this out of the cell. We can just hit the delete button or the backspace button will delete the contents of a cell. We've got this budget sheet and we got this category sheet. In the categories, let's start here and do a couple things. Now we can just type in anything we want, right? Income accounts, expense accounts, and then payment methods is what we're gonna have right here. I'm gonna do a couple things real quick. Control A, if you press that a couple times, it will select everything in our sheet. Let's do that double click right here so it resizes the columns. And then let's change the font to this outfit just so it looks not like the standard font. I'm gonna create a bold font here by just Control B is the shortcut for that, or you could click it up here. And now I wanna fill in some income and expense accounts that we're then gonna use a little bit further on in this course in our budget. Now I've got them in a spreadsheet already, so I'm gonna copy them in. Another thing to note as we copy and paste, look at this. I have pasted, or I've copied and pasted and it's brought in some formatting that maybe I don't want. So if I actually, instead of control V pasting normal, I do control shift V, it'll paste just the values. And you can see that it gives me an option to do that here also by uh, clicking this little paste deal. And so now I've got those and I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste in these other items here with just those values as well. Now let's use the new table features. If we select this range and right click, then we can convert this to a table. This is gonna allow us to reference these things in our budget a lot easier than we would otherwise be able to. I'm gonna double click up here, rename this into categories, spell it correctly, and we're good. You know, we don't have to change the color, but Show you how you can do that if you want to by clicking right up here. We'll change it to a red. Okay. Now that we've got our categories set up, let's go over here to our budget sheet and start doing the good work here. I'm going to select all this and make it the font we like. And I've already got some headers that I've brought in over here. Let's lock this header row in place too. If you go to the very top left corner, your mouse cursor will, will turn into a little hand if you hover over this gray bar. Drag that down and look, we lock that first row into place so we can always see our header row. Now, how do we get some fake data? I'm not gonna give you my own personal budget data, so let's go generate some here. And you know, you can use Gemini to do this, but I found that it's not as good as I want it to be. And this site right here called Makaru just gives us a ton more options. So I've selected a date, a transaction from these random departments, and then an amount and I'm gonna generate data from that. It downloads a file. You can see it pops up here. We just save that to our desktop. And then to import data from our desktop to Google Sheets, we can select File, Import. It's gonna give us some options to look in our drive, but what we want is to upload, and there it is right there. Once we're there, we can pick where we want this data. So I'm gonna say Append to the Current Sheet, and detect automatically for the separator type. And usually it's pretty smart, it'll do what we need it to. All right, so we got dates, transactions, and amounts. I'm gonna delete this row because it brought in another header. And now we've got some fake data to work with. The, uh, the dates are mixed up though, so how can we actually sort this out? If we click this little triangle right here in the column A, and scroll down here to sort sheet A to Z, it will actually sort all of those amounts by the date. So now we've got everything from January through March 2024. And those are all in order. So now we're good to go in filling out the rest of the sheet. Before we start doing some more advanced stuff and finishing out the rest of the build here, let's just talk about formulas and functions. So a function is a built-in function in Google Sheets, it looks like this. Sum, this written word, is a function that takes values and then adds them together. So if I put sum five and five with a comma in between, 
it's going to give me 10. If I put some of these two cells by clicking and dragging down, it's going to add up these cells together. If I type in something like 5 plus 5 immediately in a cell, it's going to also give me 10. It'll do basic arithmetic and everything on its own, but the functions that are built in are where the real power is. And something Google Sheets does a really good job of that is actually something Excel could take some notes on is this right here, this pop-up menu. If you're not seeing the pop-up menu and you're just seeing this little band, click this expand details right here and you get the full menu. Now this is especially helpful if you're using something like XLOOKUP where you have no idea what this does because you've never used it, but it'll tell you each of the values that you have to have. And then in these bracketed values are optional values and then it'll break down what all of them do down below. Uh, furthermore, once you start typing these in, let's do our sum example again. Uh, if you click that, it will then highlight which step in the function that you're on. So we're on this one because it's highlighted in the dark green right there. Commas go in between the values. And because it's written like this, value two, dot, 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 this can actually accept as many as you put in here. So I can just put all these with commas in between and it'll keep adding those up. We need to close the parentheses. The parentheses is what's around all of the arguments in each of the functions. And then it gives us the answer right here. And if I were to change one of these values, that amount changes too. So that's the powerful thing about using functions is it will manipulate or it will give us answers on our data if we change or manipulate our data. Okay, here's another one. Average, find the numerical average value in a data set ignoring text. So that's pretty cool. If we drag this down, this is the notation used for a range instead of just a cell. We've got this little colon in between two values, C2 through C19. Remember, we reference cells by the column first and the row second. So C2 is right here, all the way down through C19. And again, they do a great job of color coding where that box of range or where that range box is. And then we find that the average amount in there is 1,107.91. If I change a value, then that changes as well. All right, there's all kinds of functions. In fact, there's over 400 functions. Google Sheets functions. Let me just pull this up for you. Here's the function list. Look at this. It's long. There's a ton of them in here. And you can search for your function here. If you're looking for like finding the max of something, there's several different max functions there. You can also narrow by category. So if you wanted to look up the lookup functions, Here's all of the functions that have to do with looking up things in your sheet. There's a lot of them. All right, but we digress. Back here in our sheet, let's use another basic one called count. This will return the number of numeric values in a data set versus count A, which is the number of values. So if I do this and I go two through 11, that'll be 10 values. But then if I say count A, and do all of these, that'll give me 30 values. And I should have done the same exact thing. If I do A2 over there through C11, that'll give me 20 because it's only counting the numeric values in column A and the numeric values in column C. Okay, there's a basic primer on some of these basic functions. There's way more than we could go over, but you'll find that Pretty much anything you want to do with numbers, you can figure out a function. There's either a function already built for it, or you can figure out a combination of functions to make it happen. Hey, let's do something very practical. Let's do some formulas right here. Let's give ourselves a starting balance of $20,000. I'm just going to put it up here in H1, and we're going to reference it down here in our balance column. So just like in our functions, if we hit the equals sign, then we can start typing in things. So I'm going to reference H1 and I can either say H1 and type it in right there, or I can click H1. Either way, we'll select H1. 
and I'm going to say H1 minus this amount. So there's my balance for after this $1,700 book purchase. From then on, though, all we need to do is take the value right above us and subtract the value of this line. Now, instead of typing that in over and over and over and over, we can drag this down. See this little blue dot in the bottom right corner of the cell? If we click and drag that, looky there, that's going to drag the same formula down, but it's going to change the cell references. So instead of looking at F2 all the time, right here it's going to look at, or right here it's going to look at F3, then F4, then F5, and similarly it's going to look at the next value in column C. So we can drag this down all the way to the bottom, or we can scroll down, hold shift, and click down at the bottom. So we've got this whole range, and control D is a shortcut that will do that same thing, drag it all the way down. So if we scroll down here, you can see we're negative 78,000 in the hole. We really need to add some paychecks, and it's done the same thing all the way down to this last row. Okay, before we get into formatting and more advanced setup options, we're going to go over the if function. Now this might intimidate some of you because it's a little bit more complicated than just adding numbers together, but you're going to use this, I promise you. You will use if and derivatives therein and conditional statements. Uh, what we're gonna do in our example is in this column G, I've just labeled it big spender. That's not gonna be practical for our spreadsheet in the real world, but it's gonna illustrate how to do these if statements. We're gonna click equals and then type in if, We'll select this and it's gonna say we need a logical expression. And it gives us an example which is helpful down here. Usually they're helpful. If something, then we type a value that's true. And if not, then we type a value that's false. So logical expression, value if true, value if false. Let me show you an example. So let's just say if C2 is greater than uh, $1,000. Then we'll type in big spender in quotes and comma, not much. Okay, so that's saying if the value in C2 is greater than 1000, we're going to type big spender. And if it's not greater than C2, we're going to type not much. Now, check this out. Sometimes we'll get this autofill suggestion, and it'll say, hey, if you want to just autofill this down, click control enter. And I'm going to say yes, because that's exactly what I want to do. So now for every amount over here in column C, we are typing in big spender or not much. Now this is a silly example, but it illustrates the power of using an if statement. And we'll be using these more as we build more complicated things to do automation for us. All right, let's look at some of the other if statements that are available to us in Google Sheets. If we type in equals if, we can see in our little drop down menu all the other functions that are built in that combine with them if. So we have conditions and then something will happen based on this without us having to manually piece together some of these more common functions. Now, if you're not seeing this menu, if nothing's popping up to help you, remember you can just click on formula suggestions in that little blue question mark. So let's use count if right here, a condition count across a range. Another way to select our range, we could click and drag as we've shown, but we could also just type it in. And furthermore, we can select that whole column C if I say C2 where I start, colon C, and then I don't put an end value or an end row. It's just going to select the entire row. Now, if we hit enter here, we got an error. Why? Well, we didn't put the condition, right? So we need another argument here. We need the criteria by which we're going to count. Let's just put 500. And we have to do this in between these quote marks. That's just the syntax that Google Sheets expects for this function. And here we can see we've got uh, 76 transaction amounts that are greater than $500. Okay, well, a better way to do that. What if we wanted this to be more user friendly? Uh, amount to search point. So let's say we just have a cell up here that's saying, hey, change this value right here so that it is 
whatever we want to count by. Well, now we can go in here and instead of hard coding this in, we can type in J1, which is the cell where this value lives, right? Only we got a problem. It's saying zero. Well, we followed the directions like we were supposed to. What's going on? If we're referencing a cell inside of these criterion, then we can't actually leave that cell reference inside the quote marks. So the syntax gets a little bit more complicated. We leave the greater than sign because we want it to see that we're using that, but then we have to hit the ampersand and then type in J1. And you can always tell if you're actually referencing a cell when it turns a different color. So we've got this outlined in purple, the letter and number of the cell reference actually turn purple inside of our little formula bar and we hit enter and we still get that 76 uh, search count. This is more useful because then a, a user can just come over here and select a different amount, type it in, and it immediately recalculates instead of having to come in here and manually type it out. So there it is. Now let's get geared up to do some conditional formatting in the next section, followed by some data validation and all of this together, we're going to have at the end a fully functional, actually working personal budget.